What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the History of Hyenas. I'm Chris Stefano, aka Chrissy Cauliflowers. With me, Giannis Papas, aka Giannis Yaya Hair. So, <laughs> <laughs> I've 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 cleaned that up. I've cu- yeah. I fixed it. You got a haircut. Listen, first things first. Let me. Stefano handle- said, "My Yaya's outside." I thought you were her for a second. Yo, I'm gonna handle some business right now. Listen, you fucking freaks. March 19th, Gramercy Theater, New York City. First show is sold out. Second show. Tickets are moving, so go get them. Uh, it's going to be a s- totally different show from the first show, Gramercy Theater, March 19th, Live History Hyenas. Then we have a second show, April 29th, uh, Wall Street Theater, Norwalk, Connecticut. Tickets are moving there. Go to historyhyenas.com or christycomedy.com or Giannis Pop is um, I also uh, do you have any more? Do you have any dates in March? Any li- other no, live dates? No, just thank you to whoever came out of Uncle Vinny's, and let's just let's just see if this new agent gets it cooking again. He's got a fat face. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah. My, my I got fuck you to my old agent. Fuck you to the old agent. So come see us in March. Uh, I'm April, just kidding. April. I just want to let you guys know real quick. Go to christycomedy.com. I got uh, Vancouver. Uh, Indianapolis, Boston, and uh, Newark, New Jersey. Um, so please come see Baby Gorgeous uh, performing. Oh, and then we also just added Raleigh, North Carolina. So ChristyComedy.com, please get your tickets. I love cock. Because, I mean, I, I, you might be the only comedian who's hit Newark, New Jersey a few times in a row. You got a big following in Newark, New I got, Jersey. I keep adding shows in Newark. Are you, are you you're crushing all cities that used to be crushing it? Because you know what it is with this new chair? I like this new chair. Go to downtown Detroit to see Chrissy. I like it's, this new chair. I It doesn't go up and down. Yeah. The other office chair, I could push up and down so it would be like I'm sitting on a cock, and that would make and that would spur me into a, a new bits. But now I feel like I'm just sitting in a chair, and it doesn't move, yeah. and I hate it. Yeah, but at least, but at least we, I have to move, move the mic. At least we got a normal chair, and... I mean, Venity is just going with the winter hat look inside because she looks like she's a greeter at Urban Outfitters. I'm just happy Mike Mush can breathe today. I'm just Damn. we just want to make sure that those two are at peace. Listen. Because make no mistake, they're like Israel and Palestine sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are they're both moody little bitches. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I think Mike's more of the moody one. And I can understand that. I'm a little moody, too. Yeah. I just don't scream at people. Yeah, you just don't scream. <laughs> but scream honest, a you're a dick. Yeah, I can be a little bit of a dick. Yeah. Um, no. But listen, guys, we're listen. doing two episodes. We've left Ryan Casper on Barstool. We're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> We, uh, we signed a big deal. You're cut, Truffle Pig. It's everyone's getting a cut scheme. You can't sue us because we never signed anything. Yeah, guys, we got scissors <laughs> and we're making cuts. You're getting cut. Listen. Everybody's getting cut. You, my age, you better get off your ass because you're next. Yeah, and when you get into your car and if you see a red little tag hanging, means goodbye. Cuz, make no mistake, I'm leaving my lease of my Jeep Grand Cherokee three months early. I'm going to pay a fee, and I'm just going to get myself into a BMW X5. Just it's not, what it is. It's I, just, you're a German, and you just got to get into a German. You're just hopping into that German love sack. I want to get into a fucking German car, but I want, you, I want you to know it's a German car that's drove by black guys, so it's perfect for me. That's right. Max and Stubbins. That's right. Box and Stubbins. Uh, we talked about their origin story on the last episode. Yeah. It's, it's so so basically, if you guys don't know, Max and Stubbins are characters that uh, the German guys, how they- They're Bavarian guys. Oh, yeah, Bavarian guys. They met, actually, they were- um, they were not Hitler Youth soldiers. Yeah, they're characters from the 50s and yeah. the Bavarians, so they were forced to be Nazis. But deep down, they were both FFs. They were, yeah. But everybody had to pretend back then that they right. wanted to be part of the killing machine. Yeah. But here's the thing. Marx looked at Stubbins, and Stubbins looked at Marx. <laughs> and we could just see the twinkle in each other's eyes because yeah. one person with sugar in the tank sees somebody else. Sugar in the tank's a tank. <laughs> And he knows that he has Shuggins attack. Yeah. So one day they was in Auschwitz and they were supposed to be working, moving people down the lines. Yeah. And Max looks at Stubbins and Stubbins looks at Max. And there was a twinkle. And then they went behind the bar they went behind the building and they said, Hi. And he said, Hi. And he said, Do you love black eyes? And he said, 
how did you know? I said, I see it in your eyes. Yeah. And he said, uh-uh, we should sneak off. And, and so they defected from the Nazi army and they went to the hills of France, even though Auschwitz is in Poland, because reality is a suggestion. And they ate stinky French cheese and wine and they fucked, but they realized they were just friends and, and their connection was more because they love black guys. It's they love black guys. And that's the story of Max and Steuben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're two people who were just bigger than Germany. Yeah. We had bigger dreams in Nazi Germany. Yeah. Strudel and sausage wasn't enough. Yeah. We wanted eat fine wine and cheese and we want to fuck black guys. You want to fuck black guys? It's what it is. That's the look at. It's what it is. And then they would go to find black guys. What they would do is they would go wait outside magic shows and they would wait for the big <laughs> trick and they'd watch the black guys run out and they'd try yes. to suck all their dick. And they'd try to catch him like a fisherman. <laughs> yeah, the black guys the black guys like to run out of magic shows. Yeah. Um, so yeah. what can you do? But listen, um, yeah, because when you see black guys running, you don't know if it if, if, if there's a cop behind them or someone just did a magic trick. I don't know. Yeah, you just never really know. You never really know. <laughs> you never know what's going on. Yeah. So let me just, okay. So I figured something first out. First of all, your day. shirt is gay. Well, I was just going to say, first of all, I figured it out. I figured out. I was listening to the 1975, um, and that's my favorite band. And what I love about their music and what I love about them is they're just unapologetic for who they are, and they don't play by any real rules. Yeah. Every song is so different. I mean, their lead singer comes out one day wearing a tutu, then one day he's wearing a, a suit, then one day he shaves his head, and then he glues his hair back on his head, and he's just wild. And you don't sounds like Yanni. Yeah, and you don't expect you don't expect them to be like that when you see them, and I think that that's who I am and why I identify so much with the 1975 because it's that, that's just what it is. Like today I'm wearing a shirt that says, yep, comma, I'm gay. And I'll just wear it loud and proud, but I'm not gay. Yeah. But I'll wear the shirt that says it and I actually don't care what you think of me at all because I just feel comfy wumpy in the shirt yeah. and I just feel comfy wumpy in my decisions and I think that that's what the 1975 do and I think that's why I like them. Yeah. And also the lead singer uh, said yesterday on his social media that he's looking for a guy to kiss and I'm going to be that guy. Yeah. They're coming to Madison Square Garden in May and I swear to fucking Christ I'm going to get my lips on Matt Healy's fucking lips. You understand that the things you want to do are gay things. Yeah. But you keep saying you're not gay. Right. You got a shirt that says, yep, I'm gay. Yeah. I feel like I'm in a bad Will and Grace episode with you. Yeah. It's like the whole plot is like you realizing you're gay, turning around. You remember that movie with Kevin Klein where he's just slowly realizing he's gay because he likes show tunes and he, he goes to, uh, you know, uh, certain Who's concerts and uh, he still goes to certain concerts. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, Cackle alert, and we're back. Listen, it's the last week of Black History Month. Yeah, and you're a gay man. Yeah. 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 So it's the last week of Black <laughs> History Month. So I thought it would be, well, we thought as a group here that- Are you just farting in front of Venetia now? Because make no mistake, this weekend you were just letting them rip and they were horrible. They were wet. And Chrissy Wellfarts was back in full effect Chrissy at Gotham Wellfarts Comedy back. Club. I had no choice but to fart in front of Venetia. I had to let the come out. So- <laughs> Is that why they're wet? Yeah. Wait a second. They all got a little sperm in them. Because it took two years. <laughs> it's been know. a while since we talked about Chrissy Wellfarts. Chrissy Wellfarts, and that goes more in your theory with different eras that I have. Because Chrissy Wellfarts sounds like a lifetime ago. Yeah. And it was really just a few months ago. It was a few months ago, but you know, you stopped farting. And then this weekend, Venetia was in there, and you just broke the seal. Like, you were farting a lot in the green room, and your farts sound like they're underwater. But now, you've yeah. revealed the reason. It's because there's cum in there. It's what it That's is. That's why they're wet. It, they got a little sugar in them. <laughs> yeah, thank you. If, if you I, if you if there's one person in this world you can fart in front of, it's your wife. And yeah, fart in front of my wife. Yeah, Venetia is uh, long gone from any hope or chance you have, buddy. Well, no. Yeah, with Venetia, you're it's destined, just a waiting game because you're just destined to be. You're just destined to be with somebody who walks their check to Banco Popular. It's what it is. I'm back with my baby's mom. It's what it is. It's. It's what it is. I, I had a nice little Middle Eastern piece in the green room. You did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you did. And Venity was giggling when she was watching you flirt. It was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. And then watching you, you and watching you lie about Thanks. why you couldn't hang out with her that night that night was my joy on the night home. It's what it is. Yeah, because when when Chrissy when Chrissy's canceling plans, you're gonna hear a lot of two words. You know what those two words are? Take a guess. The baby. Oh, the, don't let me let me let her guess. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The baby or uh, now what's phone, the phone complication? No, you're gonna hear a variation of the same word. I'll give oh. you a hint. It's a variation of the same word. Two versions of the same word. You're gonna hear over and over again when Chrissy is canceling plans with a toot. Give me, give me, give me. You, you got one. Okay. Baby's baby definitely one. One. And what's the other one? Uh, I, something about schedule. No, babe. <laughs> 
Babe. Yeah. You're going to hear a lot of babe. <laughs> yeah. You're going to hear a lot of baby. Yeah. It's going to be babe, babe, babe. I'm sorry. I, I got to be with the baby. The baby's in the, on the trunk. It's going to be B-A-B-I I forgot the babe. or B-A-B-E. Yeah, That's, I, it's going to be a lot of those. Yeah, babe. I got to take the baby to Afghanistan. <laughs> well, what do you mean, babe? Babe, babe. Well, she's got swimming lessons at two. Babe, yeah. the, the baby's underneath the car. I got to get her. Bye. Yeah, I was on the cruise. I was on the cruise in the middle of the ocean, and I got a, got a girl out of my room. I said, I got to go get the baby. Now, what cruise? We're in the you middle on? of the Atlantic. Were you on Rosie O'Donnell's cruise? The practical first cruise. <laughs> <laughs> I just got lightheaded. Do I have heart problems? I just, I almost went down. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, I sorry. seriously almost went down. Sorry. Is that a problem? Or is that, was that a. You're fucking yada yada hair. Yeah, wait. So, Chrissy, <laughs> when I feel like I'm almost going to go down and funny, and my blood pressure, that's just a blood pressure spike? Yeah, it's a blood pressure. Is that a problem? The blood pressure goes up. I mean, you got to go get a cookbook and cook for your husband. <laughs> yeah, my hair was a problem. <laughs> I look like I was wearing a young, old woman's wig. Before yeah, I when you her. walked into Panache Barbershop at Bay Ridge, they were uh, Steph, Stefano was texting me. He's like, I can't believe this kid's walking around with his hair like that. He he wanted to cut your hair immediately. Yeah, he didn't even want you in the barbershop with your hair like that. He said, "My and now you look good." He said, "I look like he's great." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're it was great. Ninety-seven. Yaya. Listen to me, guys. So we thought for the last week of Namine Month, Black History Month, which has been very successful because of you guys, the fans. Thank you so much. We've had great, great, great uh, black people have done great, amazing things in history. Uh, Harriet Tubman, Marvin Gaye, uh, George Washington Carver, recently Garrett Morgan, who Mike should, Cannon. who should be more famous. And then last but not least, we thought the best way to end Black History Month would be someone who's done the most for the black community, uh, Eminem. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to end it with Eminem because he's white. Wait. And then we're going right into fucking Women's Month. Yeah. We're going right into Women's Month. And we're going to start with RuPaul. Yeah, we're going to start with RuPaul. And uh, Maurice next. Women's Month. Yeah. Yeah, Women's March is Women's Month, so we got a lot to look forward to on that. Yeah, and we're going to just, yeah, we're going to start. We're going to start. Started off nice, but we're going to end I, Black History Month with Eminem, who you guys know. His real name is Marshall Mathers. Uh, he's a rapper. Um, and he's a he's squeak. Seven. Is it a squeak? <laughs> He's a squeak. Eminem squeak. He's he's borderline squeak. He's like five six. Wait, the kid five he's seven. He's forty seven years old already. Yeah. Eminem. Yeah. Are they're just getting old, huh? Yeah. yeah. The rappers are just getting old. Yeah. But you know what? He's he, what's wild is he's he's probably the best rapper. You think which so? Is wild, like skills wise. Well, I think him, Rakim, Nas, right? Nas is Nas, very good. But not. I mean, I mean, come. I mean, you you can't be considered the best rapper. Of all time, and have Jay Z just end your career in a rap battle, even though maybe you're better than right. Jay Z. Right, right, right. Because like you know, Jay Z, Jay Z definitely run won the rap battle and the career war. Mm. But you got to say Nas definitely won the uh, commercial voiceover war. What does he do? He, he does, does commercial voiceovers now. For who? I think it was for Hennessy. Oh wow! So that's where he's at. Well, now. what? Yeah, that's what? not good. Wow, that's shocking. Yeah, that's um, not good for for a great rapper. You know, he's just doing commercial. He's doing a lot of commercial voiceover. Well, the work. kid's making money. Yeah, he's basically T.J. Del Reno. That T.J. T. Del Reno does not make money. He wanted to sleep on my couch last week. I know, but he did but a couple of Verizon commercials. No, T.J. Del Reno is great. Yeah, Shout out, great. go follow T.J. Del Reno on social media. He's great. Yeah. So Eminem, he's a little bit of a squeak. Yeah. He's squeakish. He's a squeaky. And I think for Women's Month, wouldn't it be funny if we just did, we tried to contact all the trans women who recently transitioned and, and won female sports? Let I, me ask you a question. I think that would be a great way to Let celebrate Women's question. Month. Right? Because we're all women. Right, Vinny? Yes. Yeah. Is gender, I know that gender is a construct. and but This is, whole thing's a fucking But construct. is nationality, like could you could you come out and say, I don't want to be Italian Irish anymore. I want to be Swahili. Well, that, this is an honest question. I'm not poking a, fun at it. I'm, I'm asking what the truth is. Ask Sean King. Right. Yeah. Ask Sean King. We should have done Sean King. Here's the thing. Months. Here's the thing. He does a lot of good work, but let's just can we not pretend for five seconds that that is not a white kid? Can we pull up a picture? Of he Sean is King? a pull up a baby picture of Sean King, and then pull up a baby picture of me. Actually, I posted on my Instagram. Can you find the picture that I posted? Where it's a split screen of me as a baby and Sean King as a baby. It's on my Instagram if you scroll Wait, back. Wait, I want to see Sean King. Sean King. Without the shape up. With the, so he's. His mother's white. His brothers are white. But is his father black? His dad on his birth certificate is white. He looks like his dad on his birth certificate. But does he say that he he's grew black? up in a white family. He says that his mom. This is how I know he's white. He says his mom had an affair with a very light skinned black man. I think. 
By very light skinned, he means white. <laughs> white. <laughs> yeah, some mysterious, very light skinned black man his mom had an affair with out of wedlock or something. And that's why he is right. like 10% black or whatever. Well, like just that. pull up Sean King. Just pull, I just want to see I Sean mean, King. Yeah, he may have a little black in him, but he definitely was raised in a white family looking white. And right. he definitely chose blackness, which is fine. Yeah, I guess like you could be transracial. But that's what. But that's my point. It's like I don't know. He's doing good, point. good things for the community, which is great. I think it's different than. But I um, just don't. But like, I think it think I think it's different for trans because trans. I think, um, I think people. You're born. You're born just feeling like you know you're you're a different gender. Yeah, I mean, and he that, looks he looks black in this. I could see how he's black in this picture though, in these pictures. But you're saying as a baby, he does like he does he does a nice thing with the shape up and the thing. Go look at pictures of him as a kid. Right. Before he cuts his hair that way. Yeah. All right. Well, he's I, I would guarantee I guarantee he's 100 percent white. Wait, you see there? I yeah. Just go, to the, go to the baby picture. See the baby pictures no, no, down no. towards the right. Yeah, Mike? I mean, Mike, it's right up there. The second to the left on the top row. Top row, second to the left. Keep oh, oh, right there. Right there. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Second to the left. There you go. Boom, baby. boom, boom, boom. Yeah. yeah there, there you go, go, Papa. No, really? I'm yeah. black. Yeah, no, there he looks like a, a young That's him as a kid. Boy. He looks like me when I was a kid. He does. He does yeah. look like me what as a kid. What can you do? I mean, look at his hair. Look at him. He's a white kid. Right. I mean, that is a white kid. I'm sorry. If people go, hey, Thurgood Marshall, it's like, yeah, there's a few, but like even Thurgood Marshall. Wait, what's up with Thurgood Marshall? Thurgood Marshall was black, but. No, he, I know he's he had, black. I'm just saying he had kind of whitish hair because that happens once in a while. Like uh, Colin Powell, but Colin Powell had kinky hair. I mean, I, they, we're, black people, a lot, for the most part, African Americans are mostly mixed. I'm just saying when it comes when it comes to Sean King, I think we got a situation. We got a little bit of an Elizabeth Warren situation. Look, this is something that has happened recently. It's like there's a cultural phenomenon. You can't deny it. And those were a couple of examples of like white people claiming they were something else for kind of cultural points. You can't deny it. Elizabeth Warren did it. Elizabeth Warren pretended she was a little bit fucking Native American. Right. She did. Because right. she wanted points. She wanted those votes. And, 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 and in yesteryear when she was applying, she wanted scholarships or whatever, or she wanted those cool points or whatever it is, because it's become kind of cool to say like- As long as you're not straight and white, everything else right. is good. That's why I'm wearing a t-shirt that says, yep, right. I'm gay. She got caught lying. Elizabeth Warren has no Native American in her. She admitted it. She apologized for it. But it was a fucking lie. Yeah. Rachel Dolezal pretended to be black. She pretended. She lived as a black woman. She became president of a fucking local chapter of an NAACP. It's the hilarious. It's hilarious. The documentary is hilarious. Turns out she's a 100% white woman. But, it's, but it doesn't negate the things that she did. The things she did are great. Sean King, yeah. who is uh, uh, you know one of the founders of Black Lives Matter, right, has done a lot of great work, uh, cuts his hair, looks a certain, looks like a very light-skinned black woman, took an Oprah scholarship for a black person and went to Morehouse, That's I believe. That's a problem. Oh, and and here's the deal. Yeah, that's the issue then. His birth certificate was found. Regardless of who found it, some fucking alt-right media, whatever it is, the truth is his birth certificate, and we're talking about this in Yad Me Month because we're wild, <laughs> but the truth is, <laughs> yeah. the truth is, Venetia, I'm sorry if you feel uncomfortable because you're a millennial, but the truth is his birth certificate says his father is this white kid named something king i don't remember and yeah. then look at the picture of the kid and you're like that kid looks exactly like his son that's what it is venetia so tell fucking little nas x or whatever the hell you listen to write a song about it but then he said you know what happened was my <laughs> mom he goes my mom had an affair with this i was born through an affair with this very very this mysterious very very light-skinned black guy who he's never giving a name for i know there's some people think listening going yanni you're wild okay how wild am i why doesn't he just ask his mom what the guy's name is it's just so what it these is. people can go hey can we find your son or after you've become famous don't you think some kid might come around like shaq's dad and be like hey can i get a couple of dollars yeah because you're lying yeah but who is this mysterious and why did he refer to him as a very light-skinned black guy <laughs> yeah you know what i mean how do you know were you there were you or is that how your mom described it? It's so fucking transparent and hilarious. I don't know. I mean, the millennials, the millennials, though, they'll just they'll deal with it. If fucking, if Ace Boogie with a hoodie writes a song about it, they're in. Yeah, because like we're in it, we're in an era where like <laughs> details and research is just too much work. The yeah. truth requires work. So I just want to fucking say an emotional slogan. Yeah. And professor, if you fucking say anything contrary to what my fucking emotional reaction is to with this history that we're reading, you're fucking racist. You're canceled. Benity is like, I'm cold. Let me put my hat. 
hat on, but also no socks. Yeah, also, and please lay off the fucking, <laughs> yeah, no socks, but a winter hat. She's like, my ankles will be out, but my the scalp will be warm. Yeah. It's just what it is. I'm a millennial. Don't make sense. I'm woke. I'm dope. Sean King's black. Yeah, Sean King's fucking black. <laughs> One more thing, Mikey, for Yami Mutt. Because I'm doing this, black people should be pissed, and in actuality, a lot are. Good. A lot. When you go to Twitter, I love going to black Twitter and like following the Sean King shit because yeah. like a lot of them are fucking on to him. Um, but it's complicated because it's a gray zone thing because he does a lot of great work. Mikey, can you Google his brother, Sean King's brother? Now you tell me, Chrissy. Yeah. You tell me. I want to see Sean King's brother. You tell me. Yep, Sean I'm gay. Is the shirt I'm wearing? I'm I'm safe to say whatever I want because I am gay. And then for today. And then while we move on, you, one of you guys has to find when I split screened me and Sean King because we actually look like the same kid. And I swear to God, just go through my Instagram and find it. But first, go to Sean well, King's this brother. This episode is about Eminem now. We will get there. <laughs> yeah, but in it's honor of the history of Eminem, in, in honor of Eminem, we're finding all the guys who, who are white. What are we looking for? Sean King's brother. Sean King's brother. Picture Sean King's brother. Is that is that him with the beard? I mean, that's not him. Yeah, Sean King's right there, right there. Second, second, again, second, uh, third to the top. The guy with the beard and the glass. Somebody give Mike his asthma pump. Yeah, that one. Just click on that one, Mike. Mike! Mike's good at a lot of stuff. Googling's not one of them. That's his father who was on the birth certificate. And that's his, that's his brother on the white, on the right. And that's his mom up there. Everyone so why, is 100% so white. So why do people, so why do you, so what, when he gets interviewed, what does he say about he it? He says his mom, what, Not an first of all, he didn't tell anyone. He just said he was black. And he only brought it up after it was, it was revealed that the, that the birth certificate had a white father on it. So because of that. He never said anything before that. He just said, and he won't ever get a paternity test. Of course not. I mean, I get. Of course he would. Uh, actually, there was a black. Uh, there's a black conservative who've uh, who's offered to donate two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I think to Black Lives Matter if he does the DNA test, and he hasn't. So <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> and it was a black guy who requested. It's uh, what some famous conservative black. I can't remember his name. But so what happened was after I think it was Milo Yapanapapich or whatever that fucking. Greek guy's name is he's not Greek. I thought um, me no, really he's not. Yeah, he's not Greek. Just got a Greek name. He's uh, I think he's actually Jewish from England, uh, England or whatever. He's like a professional troll. That kid or whatever his name is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. This isn't like an alt right conspiracy, by the way. If you're listening, yeah. you fuck. This episode is about Eminem. Small minded kind of like fucking idiots that roam the earth. Now they hear this and they're going like, Yanni <laughs> sounds very right wing. No, it's called fucking reality. Is what it's called. Yeah. And Yanni's a truth train today. Yeah, reality is 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 a suggestion on this podcast, but not in reality. Not not today. Not today. Yep, I'm gay. So so um it got <laughs> this got released that his that the birth certificate had a, a white father on it. And so then Sean King said, This is very painful for me. He's like, I don't want to, you know, talk about my personal life, but yo, my peoples, um, my mom had an affair with a very, very light skinned black. It's guy. hilarious. <laughs> Shawnee, uh, and you know that's my family's personal history. I, 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 it's her business. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I don't wanna. So he kind of outed his mom as a hoe, which is fucked what up. it is. It's like his mom was cheating on his dad. Yo, Mrs. King, DM me. <laughs> yeah, but he was Snapchat like, CDTV. Yo, but and he he has a lot to lose because the thing is he he direct like Rachel Dolezal, he directly benefited. That's the. From from that. Because if you're doing stuff to help out the black community, whatever that is, that's great. But when you're taking something from an actual yeah. black person, that's a big fucking problem. And there's also a little bit of a red flag if this is true, which I am 100% positive it is, just on my hunch. Yeah. Um, and I'm not the only one, Benetia. Stop looking at me like I'm causing trouble. Well, we're gonna is, ask, when Seton comes in, we're going to ask. We're going to ask Seton. That's going to be the first thing. We're just going to fucking ask him. Is Sean King black? The thing is, like, there is <laughs> something a little you're going like, if that's true, if that's true, that's a, that says something about a person's character a little bit, that they would lie to that extent and live that way. You know what I mean? If it's like, you want to be a white guy who helps out black people, why not just be honest about who you are? You know, but then when you take a scholarship and, you know, you do a black scholarship given by Oprah, that's taking a scholarship from a black person. So he's got a lot to lose if that ever comes out that he actually is a, an Elizabeth Warren fake. Elizabeth Warren just lied about being Native American. I think it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. This episode's about huh? Eminem. It was a lie? It was a 100% stone yeah, cold Pocahontas. lie. Pocahontas. She, she, she admitted it. She admitted it and she apologized for it. Yep. Yeah. No, yeah, she's she, still gonna get Venetia. Still, get, she's still getting Venetia's vote. Though. I mean, she had not even a drip of it. I have at least one percent Arab blood, so give me a show, Hulu. Give, give me a show, fucking Hulu. Four more years of Trump, yay! And I got like thirty-seven percent Turk. I'm Anatolian. <laughs> I'm barely white. Give me stuff. 
Yeah, give it to me. I'm wearing a shirt that says, yep, I'm gay. You know what I'm going to do for my next pitch meeting for entertainment? I'm just going to walk into HBO and just put my 23andMe results on the table. It's what it is. say, feed me. Well, that's why I have an audition. <laughs> I have an audition today for CBS. That's why I'm wearing the yep, I'm gay shirt. Because, like, are you going to say no to me? That's hilarious. I'm gay. That's fucking hilarious. So it's what it is. Yeah, that's hilarious. You're it's... wearing that to the audition? Yeah, well, no. I'm Instead of going to the audition, now Mike's just going to film it for me. <laughs> I'm just gonna Venmo Mike twenty five bucks in honor of Yami yeah, Month. You know what I? You know what I love about black people and black culture? Yeah, is that they love genuineness. They okay. love honesty because they have spent a bunch of hundreds of years figuring out how to survive in a country they were like trapped in, where everyone hated them, was trying to kill them and enslave them, and all types of horrible stuff. Of course. So they are around white people pretending all the time. Right. So nobody has a better bullshit detector. Than, than black, black people black and people. especially yeah. older black women. Yeah, they're the best. They just have a bullshit detector. Yes. So you have to, like, I just always respect that. Well, even when you're uh, doing comedy, you feel it. Right. Because, like, in comedy, when you go up there and you're like, you act a certain way, they feel the kind of that you're trying to not the be yourself. All, black people. Black people respond to genuineness. Ge genuineness and truthfulness. The yeah. only two things black people don't like are tipping and the gays. That's the only thing they won't. <laughs> It's the only and thing they don't like they don't love that. Yeah, they don't love any gay jokes. They don't like gay jokes. Yeah. They're 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 homophobes, and they don't want to give a tip. And you can't. And that's okay though. But I don't blame them for. Well, I blame them for the homophobia. But the tipping I get. Do your job, you fucking waitress. Yeah. They also don't like jokes about Jesus at all. Yeah, and they don't they want you looking at their feet. No, and they prefer your jokes to be energetic and, and performed in an energetic manner. They yeah. don't like it when you just stand there and deliver from your voice. Yeah, I like. Yeah, they don't, and they don't like magicians. They love magicians. Oh, but they don't like the when they do the tricks, they can't handle it. They just, yeah, they just can't handle it. Yeah. Black people can't handle it. It's like certain people can't handle things like Chinese and Asians can't handle uh, casinos. Yeah. They can't they handle love it. casinos. They love it. They just go, like, Venetia just can't handle Puerto Rican guys. Yeah, she, she loves can't it. handle it. She loves it. She Mikey loves anime and he loves screaming at Venetia for no reason awkwardly two weeks after the incident. It's what it is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry, Mike loves it. Yeah, Mike loves it. Mike loves it. And I've recently loved, found a new love for sushi. Yeah, you got a new love for sushi. And I you, don't know why. I just want to eat sushi with the baby. And you can't handle Lebanese chicks because they look like Puerto Ricans without the problems. Please, baby's mama, let us put that clip back Let's up. It's so it funny. Up. I'll put hummus in my ass. So, listen, listen, do we have to cackle what I said about black people not liking gays and no. tipping? No, because we're, we're taking true serum. And it's a, these are all stereotypes and a joke. But the truth is, yeah, black people can be a little homophobic yeah it's just and what it we, is it's just at comedy shows we feel it it's just yeah. what it is when you tell a gay joke you'll feel it a little bit the audience might go whoa buddy you know what i mean yeah we're not here for that but this episode's about eminem but this episode's about celebrating black culture celebrating black culture and we thought eminem would be nice listen you guys all know his music yeah. um i love eminem's music he does have a song out uh that venetia brought to our attention what is it called fuck donald trump or something like that i'm i'm yeah so what can you do um, Who's your favorite rappers of all time? Because a lot of people put him in the top five. My favorite rappers of all time, I love Eminem. Yes. Did you grow up in hip hop? I love I Kanye West. Yeah. I love. Wow. Uh, I love Nas. Nas. Um, I love Mob Deep. Mob Deep. Wow. Mob Deep. I really like. Yeah. And then um, I like. Uh, you ain't a shook. I ain't a crook, son. Just a shook one. Shook one. I like that. And uh, you know, I know Biggie. I like Biggie. Biggie. Well, a lot of people consider Biggie the best. I think that's yeah. probably the thing. I think Biggie and Eminem, in my opinion, Biggie, Eminem, here's another one a lot of people don't know about because I'm an old school head, I'm a hip hop head, Big L. Yeah, and you died. Gotta, you got to throw Rock him on there, and I'm throwing Cool G Rap on there. What? Come at me, dog. Yeah, I mean, not me. I'm throwing Big L. I'm throwing, I'm throwing uh, Cool G Rap on there. I'm throwing, so it's Big L. Why is my nose itching? Big L, Big L, um, Cool G Rap, Biggie, I'm throwing M on there. I'm throw you gotta put M on there. Yeah. I put M on there. And in fifth, I'm putting, I'm putting uh what's her name? Uh, Cardi B? No, no, the one from Australia. Uh Iggy Azalea. I'm putting Iggy Azalea on his fifth. Put her up there. In honor of Sean King. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cause we're yeah, we're we're No, but can you put the Eminem notes back on? Cause I want to read some facts about Eminem. Yeah. So I like um no, I'm putting Nas on there, probably fifth. Yeah. Should we just do should we just do for the last episode of Nami Month just white people that have like like should should this episode be Sean King, Eminem, Andrew Schultz? Well, this whole episode's obviously a joke because we're doing Eminem, so we might as well bring up fucking Sean King too. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing is a joke. I mean, Eminem is the Elvis of hip hop, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let's let's be honest. 
Let's be honest. Black, everyone steals black culture. And sure. what's happened now is black people are so cool that people have even stole their fucking plight. Everyone's pretending like they're fucking oppressed like black people. That's how cool black All people like is. All Indian people and Asian people. Indian people, Asian people. Everyone's acting fucking, that's just stealing black culture. Right. They've gone so far as that's how cool black people are that people are now even fucking stealing their oppression, which is fucking hilarious. Yeah. When you hear Indian people go up there after winning an Oscar and they're going I don't like, know that, but it. <laughs> Not that. Is that a Wei Shan Chien? I got let Sorry. it again. Sorry, it's a Wei Shan Chien. I was no, just kidding. No, it was funny. I didn't see it coming. I, that's not, I don't think that's what they said. Oh, okay. But <laughs> that's what you heard, apparently. That's it, yeah. Yeah, every time Indian people start talking, I'm just like, where's your carpet? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, shut Wait, Wait, shut I'm just yeah, kidding. Yeah, it's just a joke. I'm being, uh, speaking of carpets, I'll be at the Aladdin Theater yeah. in October. Yeah, speaking Portland, of Oregon. Yeah, we'll be in Del, <laughs> Del, Del High. Yeah, here's the thing. Here's the thing. There, you, whatever, like an Indian guy, you know, you say, like, finally, we have representation. Right. It's like, finally, we have representation. It's like, it's like guy. It's like, oh, yeah, Apu was given a bad name to. It's like, no, guy. Apu was made in like the, what, the early 80s? So right. like Indians didn't even emigrate to America right. to like the fucking sixties and seventies. Right. So everyone who was Indian sounded like that until you were born. You're like first generation. Your parent, all the Indians emigrated to America in like the sixties, and they're crushing it in like forty, fifty years. And they have the they're making on average. Uh, South Asian people, on average, make more money and do better than white people. Yeah. So it's like, and then you got these fucking superstar millionaires getting up on stage going like, I don't, I didn't have an opportunity. It's like, you're the opportunity guy. You're first generation. You're a multimillionaire. You're at the fucking Oscars. You're starring in movies. How much quicker did you want this to happen? Yeah. You know how much of a spit in the face it is to black people? I know. You just be like, we're so oppressed. There was a cartoon that had an accent that was done by a talented guy who could do voices. Oh, my God. It's just like slavery. Yeah. Yeah. Clip it. Clip it. We're never getting a Clip TV show, but I'm right, and everyone listening knows I'm fucking right. Yeah, because right. I actually have a cartoon in development. Clip that, and then make my face not there. Just fucking black my face out. Put me in blackface. Wait, no, that's not what oh, we're trying. Sorry. It's the wrong episode to make that joke. Oh, sorry. That was kidding. a misunderstanding. Yeah, black out his face, but don't, don't, don't actually. We're t yeah, this episode's not, about Eminem. Yeah, just make it black. Make it black it out. Um, I like, uh, <laughs> yeah, so Eminem actually started uh, rapping at um, 14 in clubs in uh, Detroit, um, Detroit, Michigan, and then quit school at 17. So there you go, kids. Listen, if anyone's younger and, and is looking to go to college, there's just another example of don't go to school. Don't do You're it. You're literally just giving your money away to the government and, and it's lining politicians' pockets. Don't go to school. Um, at 14, start a podcast. He began rapping with uh, his high school friend, Mike Ruby, not to be convinced with Matt Ruby, who's a comedian. We don't know why. Um, <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. This Chrissy Clarice Starling is back. Yeah. Just he's, taking shots in the dark. Yeah, he's a good kid. Matt yeah, Ruby. where did that one come from? I don't know. He's a fucking really nice kid. It's just Mike Ruby, Matt Ruby. I'm just kidding around. Yeah, it's just a, just a character just piece. Kid, yeah. It's just kidding around. Yeah, fucking Ruby Tuesdays. This whole care. episode's a character piece. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, the, they adopted the names Mannix, M-A-N-I-X, and then Eminem, like the candy Eminem, which, of course, stood for Marshall Mathers, which everybody knows that. Um, they started doing open mics at the hip-hop shop on the West 7 Mile. That was the ground zero for the Detroit rap scene. So open mics, that's just where everybody starts. Comedians started open mics, and even Eminem, open mics. And I feel like when I watched, did you ever see the movie, 8 Mile? Yeah, it was a good movie. Yeah, I liked that movie. I felt like... When I was watching that movie, it's like, you know, the open mic scene. Like, I feel like, not that we had to, well, you didn't do open mics in comedy, right? You just skipped the open I did mic. a few, but I kind of skipped, yeah. I started yeah. my own rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. want to give anyone any tips out there. We need less comedians. Yeah, actually, we do need less. But I know they're coming in droves now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just... Um, do you think what we should do... Our rapper... But my question yeah. to you is, because we know we've talked about that so much here on the comedy scene. Everyone's a comedian. Do you, does it happen in music? Does anyone know it's like everyone just a rapper now? Or do they still have... Like, not everybody thinks Good they point. can rap. Yeah. Because everyone thinks they can do comedy, but rapping is the rapping is such a difficult skill. It's, it's really hard. It's so hard. Here's the thing. The people who, like, the snobs who don't know about rapping, usually, like, older white people are like, this is music. It's like, it's like yeah, it's harder it is, than guy. anything that you've ever listened to. That's why everyone's fucking dancing to it, and that's why it's the most popular music in the world now. That's why they're, the Japanese are doing it. It's because, yeah, it is music, you old fuck. You old. Yeah. Yeah. It is music, guy. Yeah. I did a song with Marisa. That's it. That song. 
with yeah. my friend who is a rapper, Mr. Metaphor. He grew up as a rapper, Mr. Metaphor. He was in the Lyricist Lounge with Eminem. Really? Yeah, he was. He was. Uh, it was. Uh, they, their old uh, group was called Word of Mouth, and it was blo- um, Block McCloud, Rest in Peace, Pumpkinhead, kids from Park Slope that I grew up with. Um, and you know they all did uh, Lyricist Lounge. And Wait, the guys early- it was Pumpkinhead who died. Pumpkinhead. How did he die? Uh, I, I can't. They left. What happened? It was some some health related thing oh. that was like very early. He died. He was a, he was great. Great dude too. Oh, that sucks. It wasn't like even no. But these guys were like underground legends. They like yeah. people. Hip hop heads knew about them. And Eminem was in that scene, that lyricist lounge yeah. scene, that kind of underground scene. But um, what was the point? Where were we start? We were saying that um, the open mic scene in in comedy, and then we were talking about the open mic scene in music, and we were talking about, and not everyone thinks they could be a. Everyone thinks they could be a comedian. You know, does everyone think they could be a rapper? I kind of. This episode's about Eminem. Yeah, I got sidetracked. I forget what my original point was, <laughs> but he was. Uh, he was. You're yawning all oh, oh, my. Oh, my point was, I made a uh, the Das It song. Uh, oh, yeah. My boy, my boy Mark, Mr. Metaphor, helped me write it. So I did kind of the jokes, and he put it in rhymes. And then we went to his boy's house, who had a, 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 a recording studio, and we tried to lay it down. I had no idea how hard it is to rap with your breath. Like we, sure. the whole thing. If you listen to the song, we faked it. So it's like, and probably a lot of rappers do it who aren't real rappers, but like we just put, they just put it together because I couldn't, I had to catch my breath. Right. It's like when you're rapping, you're like, you got to breathe at some point. So it's hard to, like, when you hear Eminem and these guys and like old school Dos Live, effects. Kendrick and, Lamar, these guys are fantastic. I mean, it's insane the skill to, to, to talk that fast and rhyme that fast is like the breath control is nuts. It's, it's hard to do. You got to like practice. Right. Yeah. It's like being an opera singer. Yes. And, you know, Eminem, and I think, too, like, the reverse kind of, like, you know, predominantly black audience, like, for Eminem to come out the way he did, like, it's not like Eminem came out as this white rapper and everyone was like, oh, he's this goofy white guy. He came out and was accepted by black audiences who were mostly hip-hop was for black people or yeah. pre- performed by black people for y- years. Like, Eminem was... He got co-signed by Dr. Dre. That's Dr. What it was. Dre put him out. Dr. Dre, I mean, I think hip-hop's first billionaire, right? Is that, like, he's a billionaire. He He's a be. fucking billionaire. Dr. Dre is like a like a rap like a musical genius. Sure, like one of the greatest producers in any genre of all time. And um, you, you know, it's like game knows game. You know what I mean? It's like Dr. Dre heard Eminem, heard the tape, and he just fucking knew. Because he's a, he himself is a genius, so it's like I bet you a bunch of people heard Eminem and they couldn't see past the color color or whatever. All right, all right. And Dr. Dre just heard it when just heard straight skills. Yeah, and he was good. And he was like, "Wow." He said Eminem came in second in the 1997 Rap Olympics in Los Angeles. I wonder who came in first because whoever came in first, they thought they they thought they did a good thing, but unfortunately, guy, nobody cares about you. Yeah. You know what's interesting is like second place is the best. So don't strive for first kids and don't go to college. Eminem did it. Eminem came out of <laughs> Eminem came out of a, a city where there was two white rappers who were blossoming at the same time, which is crazy. Which lets you know there was like a little underground scene, like Chris said, on the eight mile or wherever it was a right. seven mile or whatever the, right. fuck, the fifth mile. And um and it, the other white rapper was her. Uh the other- Some, someone who ended up becoming a huge Trump supporter and country music singer. Um wait. My name is Larry the Cable Guy? <laughs> Kid <Yeah>. Rock. <laughs> Larry the Cable Guy. Who no, is it? It's Kid Rock. Oh, Kid Rock. Because if it's not the 1975, you're not about it. I'm not it. about it. If it's not the Pet Shop Boys or 1975. I love the 1975's new song, too. It's fucking cute. Yeah, that's gay music. It's gay music. That's a yep, gay I'm, shirt. Yep, I'm gay. Yeah. Um, I like the 1975. I told you why. And here's what's interesting, too. I, I, you're I, a straight man with a gay spirit. It's what it is. Yeah. I've, I, um, I, I. I, when I was reading this, it was interesting. Some people say some people are old souls. You're a gay soul. I'm a gay soul. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm a queen. Yeah. Um, Eminem got in trouble and outraged the gay and lesbian allegiance against defamation society. They denounced him. They called him a homophobic misogynist. Um, he had a re- bad relationship with his wife. Um, you know, used to rap about killing her. But my point is, is like, do you think, and this is going to be controversial about to say, but do you think that only happened because he was white? Because so many rappers talk about they don't like gays and they talk about objectifying women and people just don't care. But because he was white, these gay and lesbian al- al- alliance against defamation were like, yes. you're I, canceled. Do you that, think that? I think with that specific thing, yes. Do you, Venetia, the, do the you homophobia think that? part, yes. Venetia, who's woke and dope, do you think that? This is not like no, to try to get too one woke back for the dope. whites. She I'm just it. asking. No, it's an interesting point that you bring up. I think, uh, yeah, maybe yeah. it's because Yes, because white. white activists would never attack black, would never say, that, that's bad, Those, that rap album was bad. 
Or maybe they're just not even listening. Maybe they would. Maybe they weren't even listening until a white guy did it, and that's equally as racist. Then Atia comes yeah. out when she's cold. She comes out with a scully hat on her head, yeah. and then she comes out with no shoes or socks, but she puts little earmuffs on her ankles. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it actually <laughs> took? You know what it actually took for a black rapper to cause a controversy? Talk, making a song about shooting cops. Ice yeah. tea. Yeah. Remember that? It was like Dan Quayle and Bush were like all over him. You know, that it's interesting. Freedom of speech. I mean, the, the ra rappers have kind of been under fire like comedians for freedom of speech. You know, I guess it's like Marilyn Manson. No, but the things that rappers are rappers, allowed to say, I mean, the all rapper, rap music videos, and this has nothing to do. Dude, but they were. It's all Me Too's. It's all talking about degrading women, but nobody's, it's not, nobody cares. But in the 90s, they were, the, the Republicans were trying to like create legislation to like fucking really. Well, no, you can't do that. Stifle, stifle their, uh, their music. They need to no. They were uh, it was tr they were trying real hard. A lot of it was because of the cop killer shit. A lot of it was like the violence towards women shit. Um, Ice T was very controversial because of that. He had yeah, a song you know called what? Cop. You killer. know what I say to all that? Freedom of speech. Say and do whatever the hell you want to do. Talk about whatever you want. Talk. You know whatever you want to say. If you're like too stupid of a human being, if you're that stupid of a human being, we're going to listen to something in a rap song and then do it because. Then get the. Uh, you're a weak person. You're probably going to do it anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't. And I, you're not. Uh, uh, that's not going to help us get towards the master race. Yeah. So you know. Yeah. You, you need to just. I was kidding. There's a way. Shot I mean, you where's the button? Around. It's just, it's just the whole thing. Just the whole episode. Around. Yeah. But it is stupid. Where it's like I've never heard a rapper or a musician or a comedian say something that made me want to go out and be violent towards someone. Or it's all fear-based shit. It's all like weak-minded people. It's like. Majority of people, it's like I can hear a song where Eminem is talking about whatever he's saying, defaming gay people or beating his wife, and that doesn't make me not like gay people. It doesn't make me want to hit my wife, you know. So right. it's like it's. I think we're so scared sometimes as right. a nation. And he's not homophobic, and he was never hitting his wife, or he didn't, no. he didn't really want to kill his wife. It's called art. It's called uh, lyrics. It's called e emotional expression. Right. It's not reality. I mean, right. people can't tell the difference between a fucking song or a joke and reality anymore. Grow the fuck up. Yeah. Uh, David Cross had a great bit back in the day. Right. Like David Cross back in the day is one of the best comics. Best, yeah. And he had a, it was on, I think his like HBO special in 99. He said, um, he was talking about like the people who were saying um, the video games were uh, led to, um, you know, the a Columbine shooting. And he goes like, oh, I'm sorry. He goes, the joke was like, oh, I'm sorry. What were the video games that Adolf Hitler was playing back then. <laughs> yeah. like, oh what was the rap songs that he was listening to right, 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 right. he was you know so yeah. it's like smart yeah it's a good yeah. point guy yo can you scroll up a little bit mike can you scroll up on the notes real quick so it was it's hilarious well, now, that you just admitted we're just reading notes off the screen down a little bit <laughs> <laughs> wait can you pull up the cheat sheet a little bit mikey no up down no because it was something in 2000 um go up yeah well mike uh Mar Marshall, Marshall Mathers, he, his family emigrated to Detroit. He was born in, uh, where was he born? Oh, wait, maybe down a little bit. He was born somewhere else. Kentucky or some shit. Oh, yeah. Shithole. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, because. Missouri. Oh, yeah, St. Joseph's, Missouri. They call it Missouri. Missouri. Listen, it's called Missouri, guy. Yeah. He did pistol whip his wife, though, unfortunately. That didn't happen. Oh, he pistol whipped a man he saw kissing his wife. Yeah, that. And he pistol whipped a man because he thought he was gay. I guess he's just squeaking. He's insecure. Yeah, he's a squeak. Yeah, him and Kim have had a tumultuous relationship. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, sounds like you and your baby's mom. I was gonna say this sounds a little bit like my life. We got that, and then Eminem's mother sued him for defamer in a song, and I might get sued by my family too. <laughs> so I got a little bit of an Eminem vibe going. Yeah, yeah you, um, well, you guys are both very good at what you do, and you just talk about your personal life a little bit too much. And in two, and he's also the, like the history I is because when he released the Marshall Mathers LP in 2000, it set a record for moving the most tickets for a rap album, which is what we just set the record for, for moving the most tickets in New York City. Yeah, and we just got an article in Los Angeles Times that's about to come out. Thank wow. you to Bob Stevens, who wrote the article. It was great to spend the weekend with you. The interview was amazing. Thank you for the meal. Me and Chris really enjoyed it. Um, we can't wait for that article to come out. Um, and uh, the article was great, just about how we, we balance podcast and stand up and it was and beautiful yeah. to have like a, a nice how we don't need a manager anymore uh, yeah the, about and how we support acasio cortez and and how great she is yeah we definitely how, how great she is how great she is she talks about you know the 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 common man and you know yay socialism and then she wears a ten thousand dollar dress on the view yeah so it's just what it is and how we you know in 2020 yeah. when everything is tech why would you why the hell would you want a huge tech company to come here and create you don't want that. all that job in industry you wouldn't want that we don't need that in new york city uh, I, I, if, I, 
in 2020, I don't know where jobs would come from. Uh, it, they wouldn't definitely come from tech. We're no. probably all we. I think if we just open up a couple more pizza stores and nail salons, we'll be good. It'd be great. Yeah, that'll be great. Um, for, that'll be great for the economy of the city. Mike, scroll down. <laughs> scroll down on the notes. Here's the thing about here's the thing about Marshall Mathers. Um, his I, his. I can't da- see the notes. By the way, I'm just going blindly. Over Who's here. itches? Oh, Marshall Mathers' That's dad. Okay. Marshall Mathers' dad um, was a musician. In a local yeah, band. And the band was called like the Daddy Hunkers or something. It was like called that. the like you're never gonna make it, your son out did you. Yeah, yeah. That's it, what it was called. Yeah, it was it was caused yeah, it was called the, the give up. It was called like, you know what? Maybe the only successful thing you did is have a kid. What's it's called the Daddy Warbucks. The Daddy the, Warbucks. The Daddy Warbucks. It's the, like, nobody it, cares. It's not gonna make it with that name. Yeah, because listen, the guy disappeared to California and he left fucking Marshall Mather as a single kid with his mom and Kim. And Kim came from a fucked up family. She started living with them. And they were like, it was like at first she was like part of the family, but then Eminem started banging her out. It's what it is. And then they had a kid who I heard is, a, I can't say because she's, got, a, he no, got, she's legal. She's I know, but he got, he got mad at MGK for saying that she was beautiful. So I don't, want, I don't want him to make a rap song about me. Why? That would be great for our careers. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, seriously, why did he get mad about that? She's a good looking woman now, right? How old is she? And I think she's legal. I mean, yeah, not, maybe MGK might have said something bad about her i don't remember but he destroyed mgk in that fucking battle yeah well i mean i don't know nice why you would go heads. up i don't know why you would try to go up again try to battle rap eminem i mean it's crazy i mean the mic name's machine gun kelly huh she's 25 oh, she's way legal. yeah she's like she's only like yeah she's five years younger than my wife she's legal in every state she's young though that's very young yeah but she's a young girl yeah what can you do yeah she's but, good um, she's legal then of course, um, Eminem when he got real successful in two thousand one, uh, hit you know D twelve him and all his Detroit friends. Yeah, uh, D twelve, which I think was named after the twelve apostles. That's what my mother said. That's I think you're right about that. Yeah. I think that's actually his uh, HHFOD. That's why my mother listens to Eminem because she said that I like D twelve. She's also listening to this for legal reasons. Yeah, and yeah, so is yeah. A lot of my family listens, and I didn't know. Do you think your mom just goes to confession and turns on her phone and plays history hyenas? Yeah, and she's like, and says, "Help me with this, yeah, father." Yeah, father. Yeah. That's my good for nothing side. Good for nothing. Yeah. No, she loves you and she, you know, she, I can't believe she listens to this though. I, I, thought, he I, was, I thought, uh, I eight, recommend against it. I thought, I'd eight, stop. I thought Eight Mile, Eminem's movie about his life, I thought he did a phenomenal job and RIP to Brittany Murphy, but she was a piece. She was a piece. Yeah. And that Emin, Eight Mile. And I used to move my monkey to the scene when she got banged out. That's how you used to move your monkey? That's how I used to move my monkey. Because you move your monkey to a lot of just generic scenes. I do, yeah. You jerk off to weird things. I do jerk off to weird things. You move your monkey to. Don't, don't, don't. Screenshots of women's feet. No, I don't. That's made up. You'll zoom in on a foot. No. And move your monkey. (laughs) I moved my monkey to the 1975. And, uh, yeah, I like to move. It's my not monkey. true. It's not true. Like, so we don't even need a cackle because it's not true. I'm I, not. I'm not. I'm not that sick. I like to move my monkey and shoot it right into my belly button hole. Because you know, the, 1975 moves your monkey. Because when I move my monkey, I shoot my glue into my belly button hole. It looks like a prop. Because <laughs> <laughs> you cackle that. That was weird that I said that. I don't know what I'm talking about. I tried to make a glue construction joke. For pre-K kids. Yeah, because you got Sometimes you just shoot. Sometimes I shoot to kill in here, and I wind up killing me and my family. It made sense, but it was just weird. Yeah, so just cackle it out. Yeah, because you got... my baby's mom is listed with her legal team. You got a war-hardened glue gun. I got a war-hardened glue gun. You do have a war-hardened glue gun, and because you move your monkey too much. I move my monkey too much. Now I've been putting condoms on to move my monkey and splooging into the condom. That's what you got to do. And then throwing it at my neighbors. Yeah. You got your sex at it. (laughs) This has gone off the, the for the last week for the last week of Yami month. Did you guys expect anything else? We are the history there. hyenas. We're gonna fucking go wild. We only got an attention span for three weeks. This episode's about Eminem. Yep, I'm gay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Eminem. Um, yeah. So Eminem's just. So his dad left him. His right. uncle, who he loved, and let's be honest, died. Eminem's just insane now. He's got a fucking beard. He's saying he hates Trump. Now he's just gone, gone insane again, which most geniuses do. But he'd probably be a nice guy if you met him in person. But it's also like, listen, guy, I don't fucking know. You're a great rapper. We all love you. But just shut up with the fucking hat low. And you're, I don't know what you're fucking talking about. You came out and you rapped in the Grammys. I mean, I don't know. You're... That was yeah, people. People didn't know why that happened. Just a right? lunatic like everybody else. So are we. It yeah. doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, just we make another song. I'm gonna put Lakes and Maple in my ass. Yeah, we totally can't have a comedian host the Oscars. That's a bad idea because they could be problematic and unpredictable. But what we can't have is Eminem do a song. Who, if you go listen to those lyrics, yeah, wow. 
I mean, it's hilarious. Yeah, it's hilarious. It's fucking hilarious. And it's hilarious when, like, McDonald's will look at our content on YouTube and go, like, well, we have, you know, YouTube, I'm sorry. You got to make this a limited ad. We would sure. never advertise on that. We would never advertise to kids and families those words, but we would, because we would love to sell them 100% fucking poison. Yeah. So don't say those words because our fucking poison needs to go into those families. How hypocritical are these fucking people? Baby Bubba's, listen to me. When I went Talk on that, to me, sweetie. When I went on that fucking cruise. Yeah. When I went on that cruise, okay? Yeah. My little stinky pinky. When I went on yeah. that cruise. Talk to me, baby the, gorgeous. With 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 the um with the impractical jokers cruise. And yeah. and 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 we literally takes three hours to get from Miami to the Bahamas, right? It takes three hours, but we were two days at sea. All they talked about. On the cruise was how they all they have is, is paper straws and they're all signs. Do your part in the environment, please. You know we're a green ship. You know um, if you don't want to wash your towels, please uh, leave. Don't leave them on the floor. We're we're trying to do what I can for the environment, and it takes three hours to get from Miami <laughs> to the Bahamas. But because these fat, these fat fucking queso freeloading, meat fucking disgusting. Bottom of the barrel, barnacles, they had fucking barnacles on whales, fat, disgusting, nipple floating, you can't from the back, you can't tell if it's a man or a woman, yeah. you just know you don't want to go near it because yeah. it smells. Yeah. Those kinds of people, <laughs> because of their, because they wanted to stuff their fat fucking faces and sit in, on the buffet and sit in that casino, a trip that should have taken three hours instead takes two days because the boat would just go back and forth past the Bahamas. Past Miami, past the Bahamas, past Miami, and just burn fuel at a rate, killing fish probably, burning fuel, doing way worse for the environment than a fucking plastic straw would. Yeah. Did that, and and all they and the, the hypocrisy was all they did was say that they were a green ship, yeah. as all they wanted to do was take these fat fucks and keep them in the middle of the ocean so they could keep the casinos on and keep them feeding their fat fucking faces. Yeah. Please use a plastic straw, reuse your towel as we embark to sit in the water and use more energy than a small city. Yeah. It yeah. uses actually like the amount of fucking energy yeah. as like the World Trade Center. And then it blew up in their face anyway, because twice they had to rush back to Miami even using more fuel because one of these fat fucks had a heart attack or a seizure. Yeah. Just Please end cruises. That's the type of, this is what concern, I understand. Look, uh, you know I'm a kid that leans yes, left. Black History Month, yeah, let's, enough with the boats. Enough with the enough fucking with the boats. boats. Let, 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 how about that, Hollywood? How about- Enough you, with the boats. If you're going to make a fucking speech, and I was about to say, <laughs> I don't want to hear fucking speeches from actors. If you want to know what their job does, Haley Joyson Osmond did, his, did that job when he was 12. Yeah. If you're doing a job that a 12-year-old can do and he could do it well, I'm not fucking listening to you about anything. Eminem did a movie and he did a good job learning how to act in 12. 12 minutes. It's what it is. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. How, like, how about we hear a fucking speech about fucking boats? Yeah. How come they say, hey, can we end these dumb cruise ships? Because that's really what's taking what all the fucking that, energy. What about that, Joaquin? Oh, oh, do you want a glass of milk? Yeah. I mean, I mean, fucking leave the cows. There wouldn't even be cows if, if we didn't make them cows. Yeah, exactly. To take their milk. Whatever. You're trying to save something we created in order to get the milk. There's no such thing as a fucking docile fucking cow that just sits there like an idiot. Yeah, their farts are blowing holes in the ozone layer. We bred them to and be that spray. way. We created chickens and fucking things. Now, do I think it's cruel the way the modern food uh, industry is? Absolutely. I don't. They can all fucking electrocute them in my bathtub. Yeah. I'm kidding. Happy Black History Month. Happy Black History Month. This episode's about Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> I love looking at Venice because we went. You know, we what? have to cackle some stuff. We have we have major stuff to cackle. I no, well, I not, well, not us, not too much. Well, we should not too much. All right, a few things. Though. I think we made it because I can't hear the way Sean. Are we hitting the way Sean Sheehan? It's button? very low though. Okay, because we got to really low. raise it up. Yeah, we got to raise it up so everyone knows that this is there. Yeah, thank you. This is one hundred percent character piece. Um, and I also want to. I, I was listening to the episode, our previous episode. Um, about uh, Garrett Black Morgan, about who, Garrett Morgan. who should be more famous, should be more famous. And I just want to give a quick shout out to a Patreon member's name who we glossed over. Mm -hmm. His name was Will Zhang Jing, and he didn't get the credit he deserved, right, for originality. And that one was like that was like a low hanging fruit that nobody hit. And Will Zhang so Jing is Will, shout out to Will Zhang Jing. There's also another Patreon member that we missed their name, and it's 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 it, but it might be in this one. But it, just in case we don't, uh, a plant based priest pulsed in my cheeks with this piece. That's a goodie. That's a nice one. That's I a, just what, like that one. But not Will. It's not Will Zhang Jing. But I just want to also make sure that we acknowledge a uh, plant based priest pulsed yeah. in my cheeks. That's a goodie. Also, yeah. shout out to all the Patreon members that came out this past weekend, and it was great meeting you guys in person. Person. Oh yeah. 
please yeah. come to the live shows. Uh, yeah. You guys now, said you would come. the bad news for you, Vanitia, is that I forgot to tell you this. I've gotten maybe 40 messages now uh, to my account saying that uh, your voice makes our fans horny. Yeah, it's all getting bad. We got to keep you off camera because now they're just saying you're a piece. Yeah. Because Mike faded you in at one point in the last episode and you're on camera and everyone's just saying you're a fucking piece. Yeah, and you were wearing a low-cut shirt. You were looking for a raise. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Vanity is an animal. Vanity is screwed in. She fucking sold those shirts. Yeah. Like, yeah, she sold those shirts. People kept saying, like, she is a fucking, she's marketing though. She would grab people and go, Malaka, Malaka, come here. She was calling everyone Malaka. And they were like, yeah. what's a Malaka? They loved it. Like, it's cute. I don't know, yeah. I don't know she's speaking in Greek. Thank to everyone who came out to Gotham Comedy Club. If you came to the last show, a lot of people got upset because they saw the pictures and they said, what the fuck? And I was like, hey, babe, that's the Russian roulette of life. You came to whatever show you came to. Chrissy came to the last one. Chrissy Chaos comes when Chrissy Chaos remembers that it's there. Yeah, I came in a you sweatshirt. You just got to roll the dice. I came in a sweatshirt and with uh, two women. You, yeah, you showed up with a sweatshirt and some sort of miscellaneous Persian woman. Yeah, it's just what it is. And you were drinking a fox sauna. I was fucking hammered. And it's just what it is. You farted in front of Vinatia 19 times. I counted it. I had to get the sperm out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, that episode was about Eminem to close out Black History Month. <laughs> we got to read the Patreon names. I got to do a pee-pee. Can I pause and do a pee-pee? It hurts. It hurts. So just can, you t can I just do a pee-pee? Yeah. What, uh, yeah, just go ahead. Go ahead. Go quick. Let me go just do a pee-pee. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. I'll talk to Vanity and Mike. Yeah, I mean, Chris is. I mean, Chris was born. He was just born for the entertainment of humanity. He's just a wild, wild fucking stone cold FF. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who came out. Uh, Mike, how was your weekend in Jers? It was not as good as your weekend in <laughs> Gotham. We had a good time. So, where were you at? Where were you at? I was with Voss in, at Bananas in uh, Hasbrook Heights. Nice. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't Gotham. Right, right, right. Well, and there were no hyenas fans there. I'll tell you that. All right. Well, you do a Rich's show, yeah. but you know when you when next next show at Uncle Vinny's, there'll be some hyenas fans. Oh, for sure. That place yeah. would be awesome. Yeah. If you, and this came out after the weekend, so thank you for coming out. Whoever came out, I'm predicting it wasn't going to be as full as Gotham. You think so, V? I think You're, you have a lot of fans out there. He was looking forward to it. I, yeah. know, I know Dina was looking forward to you being there. Hopefully. Hopefully. So we'll see. But it was a great time this weekend. It was a great time. Yeah, Sergio. Brought out Maurice. It was very, I felt very, I felt Angelo in the room. My late, my late great friend, Angelo Lazada, who used to do those shoes with me. Daniel Torado filled in very nicely. And Chrissy gave the fans on the last show a very nice surprise by doing a little quick guest set. And then he stayed up there and inter interacted with Marisa while he was hammered. Uh, it's what taking we do. Selfies as well. That taking was funny. selfies, <laughs> making making boomerang videos with Maurice. So you could go see and you saw in his stories. We had a blast. Most importantly, though, guys, these are live podcast tapings. You come there. We say welcome to another episode of History. You get to sit in and watch a live podcast live back to back. First show is sold out. Second show still has some tickets, not many. Get your fucking tickets in our bios. The link is right there on all our social media, historyhyenas.com. New York City, we added another show at Gramercy Theater. Go get them shits. Norwalk, Connecticut. All right? You're, you, I, 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 like I said, I've been watching a lot of the Catch a Predator. There's a lot of fucking pedophiles out there. So we're coming there to clean up that city. It's in the Fairfield area, right? Norwalk's kind of close to Fairfield, right? Anyway, wherever you are in Connecticut, put your fucking duck boots away. Put your white Ziffendales down. Tell your mom to take her fucking pills and put them back in the cabinet because the hyenas are coming to Connecticut, babe. And listen, we're doing a live taping there, and we're half sold out. We got an article written about us by the Connecticut paper. Yeah. And fucking Obama's coming to the and show. And the, show, the, show's on, the show's on Wednesday. The show's on a Wednesday, and we're fucking half sold out already, and the guy who put the whole thing together is a cokehead. So put your fucking monkey away. Come to the show. If you want to take it out and move your monkey, do it during the show. We won't tell the cops. Move your fucking monkey and it's going to be great. I just peed and I had a nice piss and at the end there was a little burning but I know it's not an STD because I've been banging guys mostly with condoms. Okay, so that's that's a good thing. That's definitely it's a good nice thing. It's nice to know that you don't have any type of disease because I'm proud of I you. I just know I don't have a disease. I'm proud of you. Great. I'm proud of you for taking precautions. Your precautions, Chrissy. Absolutely. I, yeah. I jerk off into condoms. That's what now. you do. That's what I do. Yeah. I watch I watch NBA games and I jerk off into I jerk off to Giannis Akatakupo in a condom. Okay, again, I, I just think like some people are old spirits, you're just a gay spirit. I'm just a queen of a spirit. Yeah, just you're you're a straight man with a gay spirit. Listen, and it's I'm just wearing a Yep I'm gay shirt, and I gotta be honest with you, when I'm wearing a Yep I'm gay shirt and I'm listening to the nineteen seventy five, I do feel a little bit gayer, which makes me feel a little happier. Yeah. Which is nice. 
You're a mixed bag. I'm a, the we've, definition of a mixed we've bag. We've said it before. We've said it again. You're trail mix. It's just I'm trail mix. Lakeside maple trail mix. You know what you said in the yeah. last episode? What did I say? You said, yeah. give me my lakeside maple. I just got my lakeside maple. I'm ready to scoot. I'm ready to scoot. <laughs> yeah, and it made me laugh hard because what, what, what he was referring to is that he puts the lakeside maple on the floor and he scoots around like a puppy with a bum itch. Listen, I want to read out the Patreon, the newest members of, of the Patreon who have went to patreon.com slash Bay Rich Boys. Thank you guys so much. You guys have been coming in droves. Your names are so funny that it's getting hard to take. They keep getting better and better and better. As always, we will, we will pick one PPW pseudo penis of the week. Um, so please uh, keep them coming. Okay, first up, Mandingo Enthusiast. Nice. Okay. Nick, my last name's a racial slur in Africa. Kefir? <laughs> okay. I don't know what that means. But, all right. Um, it means oh, exactly what he said. Oh, his last name's Kefir? Yeah. Kefir? Okay. And what does that mean? It's a racial slur. Yeah. Oh, kafir, like a kafir, yeah, yeah. in South right, Africa. Jong-Jan. Then we got Chrissy D, please put my pee-pee in your BB and cuck this muzzy toot. Okay. Okie dokie. Went for it. Uh, brute, the non toot, butte, cute skin flute, magoot. <laughs> Another skin flute. I, I like them. I mean, we've had a. We, 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 we haven't said skin flute in months. I know. This, but this, we got a ton of skin Makes you want to go to skin flints. Yeah. Bay I mean, it's funny, but I'm going to take away a point just because there's so many skin flutes. Brock, straight back to the porn section here for the content. Got it. Yeah. Andrew Frank and Frioles Fumes Lopez. <laughs> It's just funny because he's got a really Latin name. Yeah. Uh, foot, cl- foot glue on Yanni tastes like fumes and Chobani. <laughs> <laughs> mark it. Mikey, can you foot mark that, please? Foot glue on Yanni tastes like fumes and Chobani. <laughs> uh, then we got uh, Nady Wady likes to masturbate. Light of 14. <laughs> <laughs> Those are always funny. Good then we one. got Brooke Woodcock. Uh, good one. Good one. Funny. Then we got Ari Bitch Hips. Ari Bitch Hips. Wish my bitch didn't have fumes or arson. Okay. Yeah, those are kids who take swings, and it's just Vladimir Guerrero going for the stands, and they just fall down. But it was a good attempt. Then we got Andrew Poopoo. Um, Adam, a.k.a. It's only gay if the belly buttons touch, a.k.a. Father Bill Glue still. Like Tri- it? Tri- it's only gay funny. if the belly buttons touch. Yeah, I like so that. When you go long, it's a, it's a gamble. Brian Roll plays as a human love sack. Come inside and crack me wide open. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Brought back the lovey. Uh, Rio in my cute two to the womb onesie, craving that sweet Chrissy D. <laughs> then we got Swidney, Omar Donnan. Wow, Omar, not mean. Yeah. Skylar Franyuti. Cuzzy Wuzzy Roman in it for the potty waddy. Okay. Hefe Julian, Maggie, Muris Fitzgerald, Robbie Keenan, Tristan Heimlich, Peyton Frith, Jay Hyena, Jeffrey, kind of lonely, could use a blowy. <laughs> it's a goodie. <laughs> That's a quick and goodie. Caitlin Power, Tim Winder, Andrew Flower, Jesus Hernandez, Greg, play those 1975 squeaks and crack me open like Crete, Conlon, <laughs> Sari Howells. Nice. John, eat you from behind my Juno's up your ass, <laughs> slow KS Alvarez. <laughs> it's a goodie. Jerry R. Kelly is my sleep paralysis demon, Gleeman. Okay. Goodie. Jordan Moulton, uh, Chris Boganam, Chrissy the Bun Cake. Douglas Francisco, Ryan Liebrick, Nick No Muzzies Only Cuz He's Allowed Inside My Deli Lupinacci. <laughs> <laughs> Make a note of him. Although oh, that, was, it was, that was a tad edgy. Lupinacci is fu- funny. Funny nonetheless. Uh, next one. My local priest hernia is wild. Don't ask how I know it's what it is. Okay. Yeah, it's, attempt. Right. it's an attempt. Then we got Dino. How you doing, Dino? Uh... <laughs> From from Uncle Vitty's. Yeah. Joshy, Joshy wears Jenko jeans while fantasizing about Chrissy's D. Matt Andrews. Jay, I adopted too many hot pockets to retire early. Lynch. Okay. Chrissy, this final solution. Talk got my gosh blasher fucking pewing babe. Okay. okay. Let's we'll move past that one. Move past that one. <laughs> quickly, quickly. Um, Brian Morey. Pocket knife Bill. TJ tucked back for Chrissy's lap. Uh, just don't want to be a toot. Dylan looks like a Sandra D, but really a White Walker ball. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Corey Smith, Ruski Toot, the toy poop shoot tutor from Detroit. Then we got flag waving, putting glue on your skin tag. Okay. okay. We'll move past that hey, one. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you for the young yeah, Thank you. Jack Learoid, Bo Butcher, Chrissy, you on the juice protein toots. Uh, Tommy going to raise 15K on Kickstarter to watch the Timmy Dylan episode, Jam. That's, nice. that's, Go get that episode, of, patreon.com. Yeah. That's on his vision board. <laughs> Slash Bay Rich Boys. Uh, Larry Quinn, Jasmine Peterson, Roy Huron, Danielle. Don't become a non toot on the first. My bank account got cleaned out. WFFs. Okay. People are, I mean, this is kind of the most 
This is the most demure list we've had. I mean, this I is kind of, no disrespect, but this is kind of an eh list. I know. This is a straight to the back list. Yeah. Uh, Luis, no, no hablo inglés, Ibarra. Uh, <laughs> Ike, like Mike emoji, double chin face. Um, Ashley B. Wow, took a swing at Mikey for no reason. Ashley he B. He said he'd like me. Did we both have Oh, okay. Got it. It was a, more of a camaraderie amongst fat people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ashley B. Chrissy D. can destroy me. Okay. Uh, Ethan pushing the gay down because Father Bill came on my belly. Seven telly. <laughs> <laughs> Make a note. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nuria here for the content. Uh, I'm a fruit toot. Break out the flute. Bust me open and fill my glutes. Another nice. flute. Another flute. Austin Roan. Okay. Thank you all, by the way. This, these lists are getting long. Getting and, long. Uh, 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 the Chobani, the Chobani is going to be hard to beat. Yeah. Uh, Chrissy, Chrissy, foo foo, big piece in gray sweats. Make the toots, magoots, take a peeky. Okay. <laughs> Jack Payson, <laughs> Matt Taylor Williams, Brian Jamarillo, Joey, Chrissy, sit on my lap and punch me through to the back. Kitzler, Andrew. Sounds like an offer. Yeah. Uh, Gavin Fumi Feet, <laughs> Monaco. Goody, goody. Ivar collapses her pelvic floor when I punch through her door. Good day. Went for it. Okay. Freeport Lou. How you doing, Louie? Chrissy, it doesn't burn when I pee Holbrook. Okay. Okie dokie. That's more Danny. of a fact. Yeah. Tyson, not like Mike because I'm white, especially below the belt. Overcash. <laughs> okay. These one namers are tough too. A lot of swings today. Kaylee Quick. Josh, Patches O'Houlihan banging toots in a cute zoot suit. Patrick's o Patches O'Houlihan's funny. Yeah, that's, you can't get more Irish than that. Uh, Yanni, a.k.a. Syphysis, Chrissy with syphilis, and me. Nice. A lot of swings. Giannis, Giannis, Akintempo, can, can poop hole, snoop hole, grab my junk cuck. <laughs> Jamal, SC, Casey Jones, Chrissy, it's your mother. Um, Shout out Jamal, yeah, me. <laughs> Chrissy, it's your mother is funny. Chrissy, your mother, is that's a goodie. Chrissy, it's your mother, make a note. It's originality points. Okay, Chrissy, it's your mother. Yeah, it uh, could really be your mommy. Evan, I have, okay. Evan, I have awful allergies. Chrissy, it's your move, babe, Laguna. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a good. Whitney Quant, it's Breddy with two Bs, babe. Ryan Skiba, Peyton Baloma, Bill Bradley, Aaron Drumbore, Amy, the tranny muzzy baby who tucks it back for Venetia rock hard. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Angelica, quiero la carne Corea. Logan, give me a blue chew and your speed bag. <laughs> Joe, make no mistake, I'm an Anglo-Saxon kid. Burroughs, um, Melissa Mitchell, Sean here for a good time, not a long time. McCann, and then last but not least, Sasquatch cock. Sasquatch cock. So, uh, okay. Now, look, thank you all. Patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. All the people who sign up for all the levels that get all the different benefits. Go there. Check out the one that fits best for you. Wait a minute. I missed a few. Okie dokie. Real quick. Um, this will be quick. Yeah. Connor Mick with a potato-shaped dick, Carney. Put him, put him on the list. That's a big one miss. Finally, we're coming with some heat. Yeah, it's the bottom row. Veronica from Unconcoma. Put her on the list. Keenan Blanchard. Yeah. Bobby Nantoot. Tuck my flute shoot. String on my boots, Spagnoli. Yeah, give Spagnoli yeah, okay, on the now list. Now we're getting hot. Yeah, now we're getting hot. Drew Doyla. Raul, Chrissy cracked me open, but let... Okay. Raul, Chrissy cracked me open, but let Venetia clean me out a barca. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you, uh, did you like put all the good ones later? I don't know what's happening. Yeah. Um, Patrick, make no mistake, mistakes were made, Minogue. <laughs> another goodie. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. another goodie. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian, don't waste Sean Sheen, Ladder 14, because it's not a character piece. Pena, yeah. uh, Nikki, Chrissy can suck my dicky for an antihisty while I crack open. Okay, tried it, tried it. Good try, though. I appreciate that one. Steven, who's adopted by a couple of FF, Sean Terry, be my dad, McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> it's a goodie. Okay. What about a list? Yarmales, Ignacio Moreno, uh, Coaston, cranking my cannoli and eating ravioli, Campanella. Put about a list. Wow, we got a lot of lists. Yeah, God, wait, uh, did you did you just, you put these aside before? Yeah, I don't know what the hell happened. Um, then we got the Mexican with the small piece, Munoz, uh, Dylan straight to the back, not here for the content, here to get cracked. <laughs> Christopher Morris Jr. Um, and then Wade Boggs, sixty nine, aka Kevin Spacey's Puerto Rican pool boy. Very funny. <laughs> And Fuck, then, that's a good originality points at ten. That guy wins originality. And then I, and then last but not least, I like my coffee like I like my music. Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Reese saved the day. I mean, I completely forgot about. How that. did that happen though? It just because it's front and back. 
But why are all the why was so many bangers in the, in they the back? They just all at the same time. Wow. I mean, okay. So I want to say this. There was a lot of. I give everyone. Uh, I give everyone credit for the attempts. Okay, and we appreciate your membership. But we're very honest about the funny. I'm saying that they, we came in strong in the back, but I'm still going with the with the first one. What was it again? Chobani. I mean, Venetia is agreeing. Uh, the first one still. What we liked so far is Nick. No Muzzy's only cousins. Allowed inside my deli loop and not you and not that well, one. He's a goodie. He's good. But uh, the Chobani on the feet one. Oh, Chobani on the feet? Yeah, I mean, that's a toughie. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Foot glue on Yanni tastes like fumes and Chobani. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the PPW? All right, yeah. that's the PPW. All we right. should let people vote at some point, too. Uh, somehow we'll hire someone to go oh, back yeah, now and get them all. Oh, yeah, we're going to do these fucking sponsors. Yeah, uh, yeah. Chrissy's always happy about the people who give us money, goddammit. Well, I'm happy Chrissy. with fans. Yeah, these are fucking fans. You do feta cheese guy. Can't do him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll guys, do the other ones. Guys, we're we're proud and happy about all our sponsors, especially the, when the check's clear. Give it up, guys. everybody, for you know who it is. Theo's feta cheese. Theo's is an all-natural, non-GMO, gluten-free, and RBST free. No hormones injected into the cow fucking type of feta cheese. Absolutely. Theo's is made the traditional way, not the new way. It's a traditional way by a Greek woman who's squeezing a cow's teat. <laughs> by a yaya. <laughs> I'm having a heart attack. Uh, you got milk in there, salt, cultures, and enzymes. No fillers, no additives, nothing else. This guy, Theo, which means uncle in Greece, right? Or Ted. It means God. God. Theo. Th Theo. Theo. Theos. Like the Theos. Gods so this is God's fatty cheese. Yeah, this, this is, is Zeus's fatty cheese. Exactly. But it can also be your uncle, right? Theo? Nah, Theo. Nah, nah, toxero, toxero. So my favorite part about this th feta cheese is it's not made by a Greek. It's made by an Italian cat. <laughs> so I'm going to read it like he would read it. All right, listen, guy. Come get you, Theo. Theo's uses pri uh, probiotics, which are healthy for your stomach. Yeah, you didn't know that. Stomach. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. And feta is, feta is naturally lower in fat. That is true. It's the most leanest fat. Theo's born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, but he manufactures his cheese in Wisconsin because he's a screwed-in kid. Now, Theo's is only available to the public for two years. I don't know why, but that's hilarious. The kid's looking for a score, and he's getting out of the business. It's what it is. He's probably going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and he's uh, he's already oh he's oh it's only been available to the public for two years oh yeah, so he's just starting no Theo's feta yeah. cheese is uh, I got to be honest with you he sent a whole care package for us here uh, to the comedy cellar and the Theo's feta cheese not only did we love it but they started selling some of it in comedy cellar and people are asking for more feta cheese. yeah it's delicious it was it's that good so really go get it Theo's feta cheese is the Chrissy D of feta cheeses because two years in Chrissy was crushing it too yeah I'm just coming in yeah yeah you came in hot in comedy I came in hot yeah so Theo's also feta the feta cheese is gay and it's also it's got a gay spirit so Theo's just is hurry up crushing because I want to do the Lakeside Maple yeah and so we Theo's is being the sold the are too long in over 2,000 plus supermarkets in New York City and throughout the Northeast my East. favorite is D'Agostino's yeah Try to say it again. D'Agostino. Yeah, that's a kid who's never been in a fancy supermarket. Yeah, no, I got... Say C-Town. You can say that, no problem. Yeah, C-Town, no problem. So that, that means that uh, the feta cheese can be bought with food stamps. <laughs> <laughs> you can purchase deals at your local key food, Gristidis, which is owned by a Greek, Big Y, King Cullen, where Chrissy's mom wishes he was shopping with his wife, who she still messages. Still messages. <laughs> food Town, Med Foods. Oh, yeah. Agostinos. She also listens to the pod. Associated. Sea Town, Super Fresh, <laughs> Food Emporium, Food Universe, uh, Gionta Meats Farm, Food Dynasty, Compare Foods, Pioneer, Crasdale, Bazutos, CNS, and Porky's. And for anyone else who's not in the Northeast or New York area, you can go to Amazon, Amazon.com, and get Theo's Feta Cheese. It's Theosfeta.com. Go to Amazon. Go to their website. Get yourself some fucking feta for your salad. Feta. Okay. Now, of course, Lakeside Maple. Use their promo code WILD yeah. for 15% off. Everybody knows LakesideMaple.com. Some of the best trail mix. Whatever type of mix it is. I'm a mixed bag, and I like to put mix in my body. Yeah. So I like, I've, I've, I mean, I can't say the nice things about Lakeside Maple. The guy who owns it sent me a message, said that he did send me a T-shirt with my name on the back. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Um, oh, your baby's mom is using it as a nightshirt. It's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, she's probably using it as a nightshirt. Yeah. Um, so Lakeside Maple, stick it up your ass. That's where it goes best for me. Um, I can't <laughs> wait to the elections in November because I'm going to waddle into that voting booth with some uh, Lakeside Maple falling out of my ass, voting to the right. 15% um, <laughs> off. 15% off. Use the code WILD, W-I-L-D. Tell them the Bay Ridge Boys sent you and the History Aina sent you. Lakeside Maple, thank you for uh, continuing to support us. Truly, that that uh, trail mix is unbelievable. Fans, if you support us, support our sponsors. Go to lakesidemaple.com. Use promo code WILD. 
Get the fucking Lakeside Maple. Take a picture of it. We'll repost it. We're also brought to you by nobody else. James L. Tucher. Yeah. James L. Tucher. His this episode ep- was great. Yes, and it's coming out soon, right? So oh, it's was- on the Patreon already, though, no? It's already on Patreon. It's on Patreon, oh, so you can go here. It soon, we're going to release it soon. The great James L. Tucher. Uh, he, he's a jack of all trades, and he's good at many. He's a genius. He's also funny. He's a comedian. He owns a comedy club. He does everything. He fucking makes Bitcoin. He his hangs. wife's a piece. His wife's a piece, yeah. Uh, and she likes him for his personality. Did you notice he was funny. just itching the whole show, too? He was just itching. They, Jewish guys just get rashy. They get a little rashy. So follow him on James L. Tucher. Can you hit the Weijang Jean button? Then? Don't say no. Around. Don't say no. Just hit the button when I'm Chris hitting around. When Chris is in the room. He can't go in raw daddy. I put a condom on the kid. I put a condom on the kid. I'm warrantless. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> James Altucher, go to at James Altucher, all one word, to follow him. Check out his podcast. Uh, we were on it. Go check out our episode. Check out the rest of his episode. He's always talking about interesting stuff. And go check out his uh, comedy club, Stand Up New York, on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. James Altucher. Also... My one of my favies, 9th Street Auto Collision, not on 9th Street. It's on 133 West Hills Road. That's like calling this History of Hainas, but saying uh, we're located in History of Hainas, but our name is Girls Gotta Eat. Yeah. So Which, uh, yeah, I wish we had their success. Yeah. So listen, if you have any problem with we'll your fucking it. car out on the island and you listen to our podcast and you're a hyena, you're part of the matriarchy, go over, see Frankie at 9th Street Auto Collision, and uh, he will give you a lifetime warranty on all your repairs. He gives people good... I love his copy because he sent it in. His copy just says, we give good people good deals on parts and labor. Yeah, so that means good people, good deals, and when he meets by good people, it's white Republicans. (laughs) (laughs) 133 West Hills Road, 631-351-5300. Anyone out on the island, any problem with your car, go to that fucking auto repair station. It's called 9th Street Auto Collision, but it's not on Ninth Street. It's not on Ninth Street. And of course, go to historyahenas.com, christycomedy.com, yannispapascomedy.com for all our live shows, March 19th in New York City, April 29th, Connecticut. We're going to have a good time. Um, and it's just been great. This, this episode was uh, your final episode for Namin Month, Black History Month. We ended it off with uh, Eminem. Giannis is walking away um, because he's got full-blown Alzheimer's and he's Yanni Yaya hair from now from now on. Go get yourself some mug. I got myself a mug on historyahenas.com. And uh, yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. I got to go kiss a guy in the lips. <laughs> Follow us at historyhyenas.com. Leave a review. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> Tell your friends. Like, subscribe. Follow me at, at Mike P. Suarez. <laughs>